Now, complete high school football coverage with John Apicello, Alyssa Ray, and Eric Johnson. This is WSLS First and Ten. Sponsored by Magic City Auto Group, Shules, Powers Tractor and Equipment, Spalding Equipment, and Hardee's. It's playoff time, which means you put your money where your mouth is. You make the call, you dial up the perfect play, audible if necessary, bark the signals, then cash it in. 10 Sports First and 10 crew has your number tonight. If your enemy is superior, evade him. If angry, irritate him. If equally matched, fight. And if not, split and reevaluate. Jeff Williamson's website has no match. It's got everything you need first and 10 related. Do check it out. All right, it's playoff time in the Commonwealth. Region quarterfinals can deliver blowouts and barn burners and gut wrenchers all in equal measure. With that said, it's been since 2009, the 2011 three year run that the Eagles were taking care of business on the football field. Tonight, the return down in Rocky Mount. Alyssa Ray was in the Eagles nest for a big class six matchup tonight. Big night for Franklin County. They had an early exit in the playoffs last year and we're looking for redemption tonight. The Eagles calling card has been its defense that has allowed an average of only 17 points per game this season. They are hosting the first playoff game since 2011, welcoming the five and five Cavaliers first half. Eamon De La Rosa looking for his receiver, but finds Eagles Jacob Bear who makes the interception. First half, all defense. They might as well have been playing on an ice rink. Franklin County's Brian Cromwell would get the pick here, tied 0-0 at halftime. Third quarter, we finally have points on the board. Jaron Smith scores from three yards out to give Franklin County a 7-0 lead. Late fourth quarter, Smith, a.k.a. Mr. Mudbowl, glad I'm not washing his jersey. He takes it in for the 20-yard TD. The Eagles defense did the rest as they go on to a 14 nothing shutout. Coach, first playoff win since 2011. What does this mean to this program? Uh, I, well, as you can tell, we got a smile on a couple of faces. You know, it's uh, it's something we've needed a, a long time around here, and the kids have put a lot of work in. So I'm I'm glad that they're they're finding some success. Uh, defense keeps you in any game, and and uh, our our defense uh, played a great game tonight. Uh, you know, some adverse conditions, but uh, they've been playing like that for a few weeks now. So hopefully, we can keep that going. All right, a tough one ahead for Coach Edwards and company. They face number one seed Colonial Forge, who is undefeated coming off a of bye week. Appy? All right, appreciate it very much. I think the most competitive, not for the faint of heart bracket in our piece of the state, Class 4D. The seven seed has seven wins. Tonight we go to the home of the four seed, GW Danville, who's eight and two coming in. So let's get you out. Pulaski is in. And it was a good one. Late first quarter, Pulaski up 10-0. Carlos pull shotgun over his head, but hold on. Shakobi Hairston is on the other end of this bomb. Nice throw and catch right there. And the next play, pull will keep for the touchdown. We had a 10-6 game. 14-10 GW Danville, early fourth quarter. Kate Akers who's been the man of the moment all year long. Here we go, up top, E.J. Horton. Can he haul it in, sideline? You betcha he could. And then Pulaski would punch it in. Wes Riddle, 17-14. Pulaski with the victory. How about LCA at the number one seed? The Blacksburg Bruins at 10-0. They're going to show you why. First, Josh Nelson. He's picked by Luke Goforth, corner of the end zone was intended for Tyler Rose. Grant Johnson would get to work. Quick throw, Brian Mitchell, break a tackle, shake, bake, reload, explode. You're not catching that young man. 40 plus yards, we've got a touchdown. Bruins follow it up. Johnson the fake, he'll keep, and then it's smooth sailing to the end zone, going to the pylon, and yeah, casually to the zone for the touchdown. Then Johnson gonna throw it Deep to Thomas Coffey, who's running it in, 43-6. Bruins victorious. Moving on, Coach Jeff Heifel in his 38th and final season at William Byrd is the aforementioned seven seed with a seven and three record. They draw the two seed in 4D, that is EC Glass. There is Coach Heifel, 38 seasons. Here we go, Dreshawn Kendrick. 
Justin Barnett, 2114 glass at the half. After a glass t TD on the kickoff, Nicholas Hale upended right there. Physical ball game. Sam Danzler making something happen. Hunter Metter down to the one, and he's knocked out. Danzler would keep and get him within a score, but that's as close as they got. 28-21, EC Glass moving on. What about JF and Salem? The six versus the three tonight. 27-21, Spartans at the half. Second half, Antoine Cupid, Tower of Power. 28-27, JF. Cavs strike again. Nathan Pribble, uh, Dante Braxton. 35-27, JF. Salem marches. Isaiah Persinger to the zone. 35-33, but they need the two-point conversion. Jack Gladden to the corner for the tie. No. Overthrown just a smidge. JF holds on. 35-33, their offense ran out the clock. Here's what the bracket looks like. Blacksburg moves on. That'll be a rematch with Pulaski. JF and Glass move on. That's a rematch as well. Should be a wild semifinal round. In 5D, we lose our pair of teams. PH falls tonight. And Halifax was ousted last night by North Stafford, 60 to 19. The most valuable commodity I know is information. Did the Trojans go to school on the Warriors before making the trip tonight? Who gets the passing grade at the home of the Vikings? And would the Bees handle Fluvanna at a home away from home in Amherst on their turf tonight? All when we come back. All right, welcome back. We saw Tunstall in one of our midseason games of the week. Nice running game. Of course, we are well acquainted with Magna Vista. Eric, this, this is an interesting matchup, and I thought one of the best games of the night. Did it turn out to be one? It sure did. You know those four or five matchups in right there in the middle? You can never call those immediately, so you simply have to see how they play out on the field. And you'll remember that week nine matchup was just a six-point victory for Magna Vista. The Warriors have been on a roller coaster this year, but they typically step up in the playoffs. Tonight, they did struggle to find rhythm while Tunstall sat on cruise control for much of the night. Let's take you out to the highlights. Coach Rivero squad down six. 0, but answer quickly. Dryas Hairston goes up top to Christopher Allison with the nice catch. Sets them up in the red zone that led to a touchdown. 7-6 Magna Vista lead. Not for long. Check out the Trojans dynamic running back Clay Hardy finding room up the seam and goes in from seven yards out. 12-7 Tunstall lead at halftime. They never look back. Early fourth quarter, Grayson Hardy, he caps off a 15, yes, 15 play drive with another touchdown, 19-7, Trojans lead. Warriors showing signs of life late. Just over seven minutes left as Harrison finding the end zone, the lead cut to six. And after a defensive stop, Magna Vista driving, but this pass here off the hands of its receiver into the hands of the aforementioned Grayson Hardy for the interception, and Tunstall hangs on to win 19-13. to the key to winning, winning over here at Magna Vista is you've got to play four quarters. Elsewise, they'll take you down at some point. And uh, we had a slip here and there, but the kids played to the last to the last whistle. We came in here. We were focused. We were ready. We knew what we had to do. We had to go. We had to start out strong. We had to end strong. And I think we did that. We had a really great first half. Second half, we faltered a little bit, but we stepped back up when it counted. And uh, defense really stepped up in a big way tonight. All right, much credit to this Tunstall team. They take down a Magna Vista, uh, Magna Vista squad for the first time since 2008, since Joe Fevero's been there. So wow. this is something new that Tunstall has overtaken. And much credit to them, but hey, Magna Vista had a lot of personal foul penalties in this one. So they, they kind of really didn't help their own cause. They'll look to bounce back uh, next season. As for Tunstall, though, they're moving it's on to that next round. Well, it's Northside, and if you're going to, if you need a formula for Northside, you got to hold the ball. Indeed. And that's what Tunstall does. Long they drives, drive it they showed it tonight. It. So we'll Absolutely. see if they can get it done. Should be a great one. Speaking of that one, Northside, well, they've put together quite a resume. Wins over Pulaski, Salem, Heritage, Botetot. Reason enough to be the top region 3 DC. Tonight, they get Cave Spring, and I think we all know Jalen Jackson giving Christian Fisher. Little five yard touchdown, 7 0 Vikings. North side. Then how about Princeton? Oh, another one of their weapons. Oh, we got an end around. Here we go. And here he comes 35 yards out, 14 to nothing. Cave Springs going to get on the board. Jacob Knight, little scramble. 
And watch him here. Ding, 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 da, da, ding, ding. Now he's going deep. Lucas Duncan is out there. And that is a touchdown. It was 14-8. But here comes the kick. Tyrell Mackenheimer. See ya. North side, 56, 15, your final. Hidden Valley at Abingdon. Abingdon's field an absolute mess. How messy? Take a look. Take a look. And now you're saying, spend the money on the turf. All right. It's Martin Lucas, 54 yards. And when you get to the end zone, it's dry. Look, nice turf out there. 7 nothing Falcons. A little bit later on, Hidden Valley's Grayson Carroll going to keep but this is not going well for the Titans. We've got a fumble, Jake Johnson recovers. Abingdon would go on to a 20-0 win. They are nine and two. Check of the bracket. As you can see, Northside Tunstall, we talked about. Abingdon moves on and we'll get Lord Botetot next. Lots of borrowing of fields to avoid money messes like that this week, which we applaud even if the dry cleaners around here don't. Brookville left home sweet home behind for a more consistent footing that Amherst turf can certainly provide. So with Fluvanna in, Brookville is still the host. And here we go, Fluvanna's Demetrez Christmas caught for the safety, 2-0 Bees. Zach Mann looking for A.J. McDougal, he is picked. Still 2-0 in the second quarter, fourth and four. Kobe Edmonds is going 38 yards for the touchdown. Fluvanna had the lead, but Brookville turned it around. At six to two, the rest was theirs. Micah Glaze, four yard touchdown. B 16 6, your final. Rockbridge at Western Albemarle tonight. Western Albemarle's Austin Shiflet will be the first young man with the ball. And 18 yards later, yeah, he's rambling in for a six nothing lead. Now watch the pass, and you're about to see Breaker Mendenhall. This is Bronco Mendenhall's son. Great grab right there, and the gain, which would eventually lead to a touchdown. Rockbridge battled in this one. Ty Rooley to Johnny Dunn, who does nothing but score touchdowns all night long. It was 20 to 17, but Western Mar Albemarle pulled away from there. 33-17, your final. Thursday, I'll, I'll remind you, Heritage did beat Rustburg. Liberty upset Spotswood as well. So as we go to the bracket, Heritage in Brookville, Western Albemarle and Liberty, three of the four teams coming out of the Seminole District in that region. Stick around, there can be only one. Would that one be the Glenver Highlanders? Sports is next. Division three VIS state semifinals, Portsmouth Christian at Roanoke Catholic tonight. Here we go, Roanoke Catholic looking for a 30th straight win. And yeah, how about another state title coming up? Bryant Gilfoyle, perfect pass. Alex Vaught, there's your touchdown. It was eight nothing early. A little bit later on, Kawan Ray would uh, get the corner and I, I haven't seen anyone slow down Catholic this year. Uh, there he goes. It was 14 nothing in this one. Third and goal late in the first half. Gilfoyle will find Ray in the back of the end zone showing this is a diversified offense that can do a lot of things. Here he goes, Rono Catholic 50 to six. They will get Fuqua for the VIS state championship. All right, what about North Cross? They're a 36 nothing winner. They await the winner of Isle of, of White and Fredericksburg Christian, which plays tomorrow. Which brings us to Glenver and Appomattox and all these talented teams. And they all have to eliminate you know, each other eventually. Yeah, exactly. You know Glenver's a little upset that they lost to a tough Radford team last week. Yeah. They went to that game undefeated. So the Highlanders are number two seed after that. And these captains have had a fantastic leadership season. Glenver wasted no time. First quarter, Gerber's hands off to Billy Alexander, and he books it to the end zone for a 7-0 lead. And what would a Highlander highlight be without workhorse Brady Loader? Nice cut, goes. and he knows his way to the end zone. He'll let him in. Thank you, 14-0 Highlanders. But these guys can air it out as well. Gerber's to the sky, and Nick Seabolt is there. Loader would cash it in on the same drive as Glenver wins big 41-0.
All right, Coach Doug Smith in Appomattox County, the three-time defending state champs hosting Giles. Appomattox pitches to Christian Ferguson, who turns the corner and powers in for the TD as they go up 7-0. The cheerleaders also put in work, of course. Look at that. More Raiders. <laughs> Colin Shaw up the middle, fumbles into the end zone, then recovers for the score as they take a 14-0 lead. Giles would get some action going with the long pass completion. Chaston Ratcliffe airing this one out. It goes through the hands of the defender and Spartans Austin Perkins is there to grab it and rambles into the red zone. But Appomattox defense would stop that drive later. Freshman quarterback Trey Lawing scores 35 to six as Appomattox takes this one. All right, let's take a look at the bracket. As I mentioned, Radford, that number one seed with the win, as we mentioned. Sure, and look at Appomattox Glenver. Oh yeah, my gosh, what a war in the semifinal. That's gonna be huge. Can't yeah. wait for that one. All right, and this, uh, for our area, some bad news. Grayson County gets one. Yeah, tough season for them, tough loss for them, great season for them. All right, meantime, at Southern University in Buena Vista, Perry McClure moved up to the turf to take on Bath County. I love the banner. It said, tell your girlfriend you'll be available next week. That's pretty hardcore, but nonetheless, here we go. It's Marcellus Dawson, one yard touchdown run, and Perry McClure was on the way. And how about Austin Moore? Look at this run. Look at the blocking and the escort. He would roll on in, and this one a 44 to 12 win for Perry McClure. Other scores tonight, Galax is a winner, George with blanks Covington, and narrows over Auburn 18 to seven. So a quick check of that bracket. Now we're getting to all-star uh, semifinals right here. Should be a good one. Thursday's game, Stonewall Jackson fell to Alta Vista. Riverheads and William Campbell moving on. Can we take a quick check of the Hokies men? They got things started on the hardwoods tonight. Yeah, the running Bulldogs of Gardner-Webb were in. And Nikhil Alexander-Walker coming up. Little spin move for two. 87-59. The Hokies no problem as they open things up. Of course, big day of ACC football tomorrow and another week of playoff action next week. It was a fine show indeed. We'll see you next week.